<laughs> Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> You're very welcome. You. Enjoy. Um, as serious as Sarah, my talk will be, and I'm gonna talk about the weird things about React. Um, so yeah, you already heard, I'm Nick. Um, I work on Serenity, end-to-end -end encrypted notes documents. Um, looks like this, uh, we're gonna, there's an app already there, but currently rewriting everything, um, as you should. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, basically I care about end-to-end -end encryption, privacy, and so on. So if you care about that too, come up to me later and, and we can talk. Um, about cryptography or whatnot. Um, I also do ACAD courses, uh, so you can find me uh, up there and uh, look for designing GraphQL schemas, for example. This will not go out of time. And um, I'm also a consultant or freelancer, depending who is asking. Uh, disclaimer, uh, this is not a complete list of weird things of React, so if you have something that bugs you, come up to me later, talk to me. I can uh, make an iteration of the talk and put it in there. And yeah, then let's start. Uh, so my journey actually started with 0 0.12 or 0 0.13 in React. And uh, then came 0 0.14 and everything was awesome. Like I loved React, it was awesome. It was doing exactly what I needed and wanted. It was a UI library, not a framework, TM. And uh, then 15 came along and that was a bit weird. Um, at this point, the first warning signs. Um, but on the other hand, they, they wrote this blog post that was like really, really long. It was long, long, long. So I felt like either this is dedication or a lot of guilt, um, but I don't care. Either way is fine for me. As long as they're committed, I run with it. Um, so I continued and, oh God, it takes a while. Um, so I went with 15, 16, 17, 18, and I'm still on React. So far, so good. The, and especially what I like about it is, so I wasn't concerned because what I like about it is every time I, I ran into a problem, there was a lot of information on the official docs, the twitter.com. Uh, you could always find information on Dan's uh, profile, on Sebastian's profile, Andrew, and so on and so on. It was, it's, it's just fantastic. And it, it's for real, you know? This, this is probably like a little bit seriousness. Um, so for example, do you know that flush sync from React DOM, you can actually force to, to flush everything? So in this example, uh, you can actually update your messages in a chat and then scroll to the last one. This works, you don't, you don't need an effect for it. It's fantastic. I actually missed that one. Someone in the, in the workshop told me about it. Uh, why did I miss it? Because it was on YouTube. It was tweeted on YouTube, but I don't watch all the YouTube videos that they are tweeting. So sometimes you miss it, but glad in the workshop was pointed out. And, but then another one, um, as for example, did you know if you have a, a, a small component or application that in this case, uh, there's a sum component which has a key on which we can change on every button click. And the thing is that if you change the key, so for example, from ABC um, to J, GHI, it's really, it's remounting the component, the whole thing. It's, it's not in an array, in, not in a map, in a list or so. It's really, really cool. Um, where did I learn it? Exactly, Twitter. There's no mention of that in the docs. Oh no. But if you look at the last line, it's awesome. They're actually changing this. Um, they really make it better. Um, so initially I didn't want to talk about it, but have you checked out the beta docs? They are awesome. And I didn't want to mention it because like, yeah, I don't want to spoil anything, but I mean, if you Google for it, it's the first entry in Google. So, um, fine to share, I hope. <laughs> and yeah, um, at this point you might wonder you're in the state charts track. What is he talking about? Um, but on the other, I think you're too deep in and like getting up out is probably too weird now. So, uh, enjoy the ride. Uh, let's talk about composition. So we're gonna jump around between different topics at this point. Um, composition. So the ones that are really long around um, uh, know about this. We had mix-ins in the past. This was this was somewhat terrible. Uh, that was actually terrible. We had two-way data binding. You know, we're, we're coming from this where the Angular times and you couldn't have a framework that didn't have two-way data binding. So of course React had it as well. And we had Memo before Memo, pure random mixing, fantastic. Um, but then, yeah, 
uh, this came out, another blog post, and you realize, well, maybe not the best idea. And at this point, I felt like, maybe I'm part of an experiment? I'm not sure. It, it was a bit odd. Um, yeah. But anyway, you, you know, same as you in this talk now, I was, I was too deep into it, and I just went along the ride. And then came higher order components, and I was on the hype train. Loved the idea. I was, I was so fascinated by this. I, it was the first time I heard uh, about closures and functional programming and so on. It was fantastic. Um, and then in the end, when you build large applications, it was horrible. It was like unmaintainable. Uh, so we basically figured out we shouldn't do this. And if you look at the recompose um, uh, uh, repository nowadays, yeah, they basically say don't don't, just don't do it. Um, so we got rid of all the higher order components. Well, not completely, but almost. Um, and yeah, and then came the, the one thing that I really hated from the beginning. Um, I really did. And I, I never said it loudly because, you know, you can't move against the community. Um, but render props. Oh boy, the nesting here. It was deep and deep and deep and deep. And, and you even had like people did render props when you didn't pass it in any render props because just you, it was the feeling. And this was also the time um, when I started using like this colored uh, parentheses because <laughs> I couldn't stand it anymore. So in the end, I would say we tried everything. We really tried and we ended up with folks. And I would say we can be happy. We, we, we found something, it works, we, it's pretty good. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm actually glad that I, I went along the ride and learned a lot about it because maybe I would uh, challenge it at this point, but um, I think hooks are, are actually really interesting. Except when you talk to friends who are backend engineers or so, and then you start to explain them that we have stateful functions uh, at this point. And um, yeah, they're really, really cool, except you can't put them in a loop or in a conditional. Um, but apart from that, you're, it's awesome, and they're like, what? Um, but you're already so emotionally and, and like energized that you just continue on it, and yeah, because they, they actually helped us to get rid of non-extendable classes, um, which was the thing back then, and like, what? Um, yeah, and then you just continue in emotions, and you tell them about JSX, so we write our templates right into our business logic, and yeah, then you lost a friend. Um, <coughs> Yeah, but it was great. Um, so let me jump to the complete different topic again. Um, I love my named exports. There was this time I could do all my React components in, uh, with named exports, and it was great. The, the auto completion was, was fantastic. I, I loved everything about it. And then came React Lazy. And I was like, oh, God, why are you doing this to me? So basically, if you want to use React Lazy, you have to have. Um, the component exported as a default. And I was like, no, why are you doing this? Um, and yeah, I just was frustrated. And uh, you, you know, you, you try to, you're working with a team and you, you try to come up with conventions. You're saying, like, okay, we're only going to use named exports, uh, but for React components, we use default e exports. And everything gets confusing. Except I very recently, and I haven't even tried it yet, learned that you can actually use named export. It looks clunky, <laughs> but I'm going to go back to named export if this works. I think it does. Um, except, again, using Next or Remix, they require you for all that these, their pages and routes to do named ex uh, default uh, exports again. So, yeah, maybe I give up. I don't know. Um, anyway, happens. Um, but the big question when we are already talking about next year that I see uh, nowadays coming up now and then, um, and I really hope someone asks me this soon, uh, is should I go for React or Next.js? And I really, really hope someone does because if this happens to me, I'm going to be like this and then go for it. So. Well, so React has GraphQL. That's really, really awesome to use. Next only has REST++ APIs, but it also has services rendering, so it's a tough choice. What do you think? <laughs> um, yeah, I hope this happens soon. Um, and that said, we cannot blame Next. I mean, this is their landing page. They really, they really make it obvious uh, that they have a re React framework. 
I mean, come on, this is, this is one of the biggest headlines I've ever seen. Uh, you, you cannot um, make it bigger. All right, let's jump to the next topic, TypeScript. So we have React types. Fantastic, I love TypeScript, I love typing. Um, it, it really, really helps me to, to stay sane. So uh, basically with React types, um, you should do this. So you have a component, for example, and you have react.function component. And um, yeah, well, maybe not. You could also do FC as an alternative. So I really enjoy when there's multiple options. Um, I also thinking about the JavaScript proposal that we have fun, function, funky as uh, declarations for function names, but yeah, um, have to open the stage zero still. Uh, let's see. And then you learn that actually a lot of people that are considered TypeScript experts, um, they all tell you like, don't use it at all. What? Why, why, why we have React types if we shouldn't use it at all? So they are basically saying, well, it's bad. Mostly, this is like the, the most common argument, um, you have this implicit children. So that the children you can, to any component, you can pass them in or not, and React or uh, TypeScript will not complain at all. And basically they're saying like, yeah, you do this instead because then your children are not implicit and you have to explicitly declare um, that if a component takes children or expects children, then you should pass it in. And I was like, okay, um, well, fine enough, let's move the whole code base away from React FC, we do this and uh, we're all good. And then whenever you onboard someone and they have, like, they're just learning TypeScript or so, um, they basically ask you, why? why? Why is this, the, when they discover the React FC thing and they're asking you why and you're like, well, let's talk about something else. Um, yeah. And then, then came the, the savior, this pull request. I was so, so, so excited when I saw it the first time. So with React 18 types, they, they made a breaking change, they sneaked it in, um, because nothing in React regarding that change, but they, it's a good chance to, to do it. Um, so they get rid of the implicit children. Ba bam um, So what does this mean? Basically, if I'm having um, a component that accepts children, I have to explicitly declare now that these are children, if I'm expecting it. I, I can still make it optional, but like this, this is, uh, th there's a reason behind it. Because if you're doing this, TypeScript, TypeScript will not complain, will be happy, awesome, 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 but the component expects children, so if you don't pass them in, ta -da, TypeScript will tell you, hey, there's something wrong here. Um, and this exactly fits my mental model of what I'm expecting of a type system. You know, I took this Wikipedia um, uh, description. Uh, it basically tells the aim is to prevent operations expecting a certain kind of value from being used with values which that operation does not make sense. Yes, it should make sense, everything. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, yeah, and also the other way around. If I'm just leaving out the children, because I'm expecting, there's a component where I don't expect any children and not doing anything with it. I basically want to have this here. And if someone is using my component this way, they should get a TypeScript error or a warning or whatever. And so I was really, really happy. Wow, we could finally use React FC. Um, and then the best part they even offered a code mod. So I don't know if, if who has heard of a code mod? Raise your hands. Okay, half of the people. So code mod is basically like uh, tooling, CLI tooling, that you can run over your code base and it will fix your code base and basically fix all the breaking changes. So what does it do in, in this case? Um, so there's multiple changes that they, they had in this one um, types upgrade code mod. It basically um, fixes your, your uh, components with like React. Um, so it, it does this generics of generics and yeah, in the end basically, um, it should fix things. And what they're doing with this is they're adding back children because here it says like props with children. So I was like, wait a second. In my greeting component, which is not using children, what do you mean? Um, so I looked into props with children. What does it do? And then I thought like, have you learned nothing? 
there are optional <laughs> children in there. It's like all these complaints and we're going back to this. Are you kidding me? Um, so like what is going on? That was like this. <laughs> yeah. But on the other hand, I didn't contribute. I never said anything, so I can only complain. Well, that's what it is. Um, but I have one suggestion, maybe for the next breaking change. How about we do this, props with optional children? It would make things slightly better. And what I can do now is I can use React FC and I can um, not use props with children at all. I, I banned it from the code base. You will, yeah, I, I wish I could do, if you open a PR, then, then I would just write back, you should think harder, but I will probably just write you an essay of like why this is the case, but yeah. Anyway, let's move on. Next topic, um, warnings. Warnings are awesome. Uh, React is really doing a great job with warnings. So um, I guess, who knows this warning? Like you, you, have, a, you have a state update, uh, exactly, yeah. So you're all not cleaning up your effects here, right? Um, but that's another topic, we, we come to that later. Um, so this is, it's kind of okay, nice, okay-ish, yeah. Um, it, it tells you at least what's going on and, and if you have time, you can look into it and, and fix it. I mean, it's, it's happening mostly on only anyway, uh, now and then. But the thing is, it's only good if you have control over it. If it's coming from a package, it's really, really annoying. And I wanna show you this, like this, this is for real. This is my day-to-day -day when I start coding. Um, this is my console log from, it's a React Native app um, with, with React Native Web. And then there's like just two components in there that just don't comply to some warnings. And you, I need seconds to go down and find my first debug statement. It's, it's really annoying. Um, yeah, so I was, I was like, oh God, why can I not get rid of this? And then I also recently learned that you can patch console log and okay, the adult thing would have been to like now go into, an, into the app and, and fix this and, and filter out the, the console log and patch it. Um, but no, I felt like this is awesome for pranks. Um, so um, <laughs> take this, this is really, really good. Um, so what, what, what is it doing? Basically, I, I showed it to you, I copy paste it here. Um, so, uh, console log it. You, you have to hide it in your code somewhere, sneak it into a PR. Be, uh, the larger the PR, the, 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 the better chances that you not get detected. And basically, when you then enter a console log, it will get hidden. And, and it, right now it's 702 milliseconds. I don't wanna, like, I, I really wanna have numbers that are not easy to find. Um, and the thing is, yeah, you can see the guy with the mouse, is really annoyed. Um, I know this is a bit off topic, but I think it's really important. There's no prank chairs, so I have to put it somewhere here. Um, but, and I think the, the, there, there's a lot of notion that we can put into it. So if you wanna collaborate, let me know. Um, so I think like the, 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 the right time is, so when it's like shorter content, it, it should disappear uh, in a shorter time. I mean, it's larger content. So you wanna, you wanna find the sweet spot where it's annoying, but they're not actually starting to look into it. <laughs> um, yeah, good pranking. And of course, they, they sh don't make it easy for them. They should not find anything in your code base if, it, if they're looking for console, for log, or for clear. This is really, I, I put some effort into this, so, so make good use of it. Um, yeah, but back to my real problem. Um, I, I really wanted to put it in a lib and then open source it and publish it and so on, but the, preparing a talk is a lot of work, so uh, maybe next time. Um, yeah, I, I, I will definitely get rid of this problem. Um, all right, by the way, I did report one of them. The other one I couldn't re reproduce in an isolated setup. Um, so one is already fixed, but the release is not working for us because dependencies, oh, it's complicated. Um, but the other one, yeah, I, I will just patch, uh, whatever. So, 
um, getting to the last uh, big topic. Um, question, who of you is using strict mode? Who of you has an idea what strict mode is? <laughs> Half the hands, okay. <laughs> um, really? Uh, so strict mode is this thing that you can wrap your app around and basically it gives you warnings. Um, wait a second, raise again, who of you is using strict mode? Why? Okay, just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, well, so strict mode is really, really annoying. So um, uh, basically, if it's too annoying, just disable it. Um, I'm just kidding, but well, maybe seriously. Well, so what does it actually do? Um, there's this list on, on the React docs, not, not, not the twitter.com, but the, the really the react.org. Um, and they basically, they have this list and explanations. Um, mostly, so the first four are just about like legacy warnings um, that are annoying. Um, and to be honest, if you take care of your dependencies, uh, you probably, I mean, these are really outdated APIs. Uh, so I haven't seen them in, in, in months or years, maybe. Um, but the last two are interesting <laughs> because they, they came with React 18. Um, and they say detecting unexpected side effects and ensuring reusable state. So what are they doing is basically they making sure that when you start your application, they render everything twice, they run every effect twice, they, they basically do everything twice. And it gets really, really annoying. It has a purpose. Oh, but by the way, only if you have strict mode and only if you are in development mode. So yes, that means if you're in development mode and have strict mode, your app will behave differently, basically, than in production. It's completely fine. Um, just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, but the thing is, so it has this purpose that you basically start cleaning up your effects. You should do the proper cleanup. Um, and the purpose of it, that basically you wanna, in the future, pre-render your components uh, so they can, can have like better user experience or take your, your stuff off screen from DOM and then put it back. Um, they, it, it has a good purpose. They, they, they're moving with this in, in, in some kind of direction. But the thing is, if you like, just get a friend of mine, like they, he spent a day figuring this out that it renders twice. I, it, the black uh, areas, yeah, the swear words that I had to comment out. And basically there's no hint, no information, nothing. If you're in that situation in your browser and you, you, you get to that state where it's like, why is it rendering twice? Why is my effect running twice? There's no, no info at all. And I was like, come on, we have console locked for everything. We have warnings for every little bit. And this one we don't. And people, yeah, the people don't get it. You, you really don't need to point them to a link and, and, and show them like, this is what's happening. And so in the, in the good old uh, uh, fashion of like oh, the good old times of React conferences, I'm happy to announce React reduce stress. Ta -da. <laughs> so what does it do? Well, by the way, this is like half serious, but it actually works. So, so I, I, I put a lot of love into it um, for one evening. Um, but so you can yarn install it. it. It's really on npm and yarn and and, and so on. Uh, you can start your app. Then you go to your your uh, uh, editor of choice, um, and you can import it. It's a default export. Sorry, I'm, I'm just still too used to it. <laughs> um, so you you import reduce stress and you put it inside your strict mode. So next to your app, you, you can actually put it anywhere, um, except it like, it really has to put in 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 a strict mode. Um, and what it will do is, this probably should go into the React core, but I will create an issue and see if they like this. Um, it gives you a warning hint. You are in strict mode, attention, your thing will render twice. Ta -da! And it gives you a link to go to, to read more, to understand what's actually going on. Um, yeah, uh, so this is React Reduce Stress. But let me explain a bit about the background. Um, it comes with uh, SMDS, uh, never heard about it? Uh, well, it's the strict mode detection system. Mm -hmm. um, I found it uh, in the React code. Uh, so in their tests, 
how do you, how do you, how do you figure out the strict mode is on? They basically catching console logs. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, and uh, I hope the React code is still the, the core classes. If not, I say it, it was code pilot and artificial challenge. Intelligent doesn't uh, um, have any license, license issues, so awesome. The law, is just, the law is just better than React in any way. It's awesome. And I, I really did it, dark mode support. So the, the red is a, has a, a slight notion in, in dark mode. Um, so yeah, a, a lot of effort. And of course, we only supporting modern browsers, uh, Firefox, uh, uh, Chrome, uh, Brave, Edge, uh, yeah, and we don't support uh, legacy browsers like Internet Explorer or Safari, obviously. Um, yeah, so to come to an end, because the next speaker wanna come along, uh, there's a lot more that I could talk about, but really we have to stop this now. Um, with all these gotchas in React, um, it, ha it was a fantastic ride. I mean, I'm doing this, doing React since years. Um, and I learned a lot on the way, and I, I'm sticking around for the foreseeable future um, because it's still, it's still my framework of choice, uh, especially for native and so on. Like I can do things that I could never imagine uh, a couple of years ago, and, and even with like, I felt a bit like an, I was part of an experiment, learning all a lot of weird things. Um, I still learned a lot, and I, I really enjoyed the ride. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue um, and complain, of course, um, yeah. And, but to, to have some conclusion for you as well, not only for me, um, learn, have fun and profit. So read the beta docs, they're really, really, really good. Uh, they're not complete, but there's a lot of like good examples. Uh, sneak in a console log prank, please. Um, and install React Reduce Stress. Um, and finally, you're getting to your stage charts. Thank you very much. I hope it was a pleasure. <laughs>